Ha 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 Half of this looks good. Alright. Gotta make sure things work. And we're also just waiting for the rocky ladybug. There we go. Okay, great. There we go. Okay. Yo, Twitch, what the fuck do you not like to show things lately? Alright, awesome. We're just waiting for that lucky ladybug to come in. Ah. Okay, actually, hold on. While we wait, I think a little put on some of the good old Pac-Man. Because it's Pac-Man. Love how whenever I wait for this, for a lady, I just play Pac-Man. Awesome. <laughs> Ah. 
Not my last life. Haha. <laughs> 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 I have no lives. <laughs> Why have Pac-Man? RPG while we went. things want to work. Better yet, hold on, where, where is it, where is it, where is it, got a better idea. I didn't want to register it. Okay, it doesn't want to register it. That's weird. Okay, fine. We're gonna play some Rocket League while we wait. So there's nothing wrong with a little bit of Rocket League. <laughs> okay, so she's here. She's heading on. Look how pretty my thing is. I love it. Hey, this is not, I'm not heading on. I'm like, okay. I'm here. Yay. Hello. Hello. Yeah, since it was just me and my dad, and my dad can't really get around the house very easily because of uh, his hip, I had to go open the door and then, like, make sure that guest was, you know, comfortable and also family friends. So she started asking questions and. You know, that kind of thing where you're like, oh, so I'm great. I gotta go. Oh, okay. oh that hurts. Oh, careful. Oh. 
Yeah, I just turned on Rocket League while waiting for you. <laughs> like, no joke. I'm like, I'm just gonna play some Rocket League while waiting. Hey, I'm getting on. Uh, well, okay, then. <laughs> okay, oh, then. Oh, God, it's waking up. <sighs> oh, God. The worst feeling in the world. When your foot falls asleep and wakes up. Oh, yeah. Agreed. Especially after working retail. Ooh, even worse. Yeah. Okay. No, I have been having a horrible time writing that paper, and I realized it was a five page, not a four page, and I just like my soul just jet packed out of my body and flew into the sun. Oh, oh, God. Careful. Yeah, I got Jeez. like two pages papers I need to write, and I'm just like, eh, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I have a 98 you get in the to class. The... I don't care. <laughs> well, yeah, I got it like an 89, I think, so I need to boost a little bit more. But I, I it's not due till like the middle of next week. I just want to get my first draft done this weekend so yeah. I can... Because I'm supposed to have like a meeting with him about it because he's lame like that. <laughs> And yeah, because he wants us to like all present our papers to the class. So if I get down at least the first draft and I'm like, he can be like, okay, I want you to fix these things and get ready to read it in front of the class. And I'll be like, I want to die. All right. I feel like that every day. <laughs> the feels. Though. No, that's not... no, like it was funny today at work. Like, everyone's like, how are you feeling today? Like, I want to die. I want to die. <laughs> so we all were like low key wanting to die. I feel that I have a friend who, if we ever like start conversation, he'll be like, "Well, how are you doing?" And I'm like, "I crave death." <laughs> and he's a Buddhist, so he's like, "Same." <laughs> I'm a Buddhist, and I'm like, "I want to die." You feel then? I feel it so yeah. hard. Yeah. It's, it was, uh, I think it was, I, I was telling a, one of my coworkers, I'm like, it's crippling depression and anxiety that makes me feel like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh God, I'm constantly craving death. <laughs> <laughs> when you want to help people, but you low-key want to die. When you want to help people, but you also want to <laughs> do the same thing. <laughs> No, I found or no, you people. want you are the way, or you are the same way. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. You want to uh, help people, but you're you're the same way. Yeah, let me find that meme because I actually found it as a meme. Nice. I gotta find it. Oh, all the Overwatch memes on my phone. Oh my god, <laughs> feels though. No, one of them. What makes me laugh is um is a Zenyatta meme. Meme. Oh it's my like, god. This is where I would play, play my player of the game. If I could, if I ever had it, I'm like, bitch. I always get player of the. I pretty much get player of the game, not like oh half the time God. I play Zen. <laughs> I sent the picture. Oh my God! Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! My <laughs> it, it must be so good because my Discord just froze. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Same! Oh my god! Beautiful! Amazing! Yeah, some of the Overwatch memes. I need a healer! I need a healer! Oh my god, I have Genji mains that are exactly like that. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god, yes! <laughs> oh my god, that's relatable. <laughs> like, I'm dead. I crave death. This is me, as in, like, all the time. <gasps> oh my. <laughs> Teach your kids to follow the pillows. Follow the pillows. <laughs> That's beautiful. I'm saving my favorite one after um after I'm done. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> well, that's an old meme. That's an actually really old meme. Ha! <laughs> oh my god. It's true, though! Exactly. It's true! <laughs> The last meme I just sent you oh, is me, like, hardcore. <laughs> hardcore Zen main. <laughs> yes, I am a Zen what main. Is, what is with you guys and Zen mains? Jeez. I like being Zen, thank you. Uh, you and a friend of mine are both, like, Zen mains. And so... See, I've been playing also Moria because she's pretty much another version of Zen. She really is, and I've been, like, trying to, like, find a way to get used to her and stuff, and people kept auto-locking her, so I kept, <laughs> so I was like, okay, I expected this, it's the first week she's out, okay. and- oh, by the way, by the way, here's the, my favorite Zen mean. I'm sending it. <laughs> motherfucker. Nice. Nice. That is me. Experience tranquility, motherfucker. <laughs> No, but see, I was also playing it yesterday with a friend, with a couple of friends, and one of the guys purposely just kept going, I need a healer, I need a healer, just to annoy me, and then I'm not playing a healer, he's like, I need a healer, I'm like, you will shut the fuck up. <laughs> we need a healer, do you now, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> well, then he tried to tell me Zen wasn't a healer, I'm like, excuse me, excuse Bitch, me. you thought? <laughs> Excuse me, he is a healer. He's a defensive healer. Like shit. Shit, son. Shit, son. So, alright, shall we get back to it? Yes. Where I probably won't try to break you. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully, that was... <laughs> That was an event. Oh my god. And it's beautiful that it's captured and put on YouTube for everyone to see. <laughs> and Zach to see. <laughs> right? For Zach to see. He's be like, oh yeah, these people like stream my game. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, he's excited for when we get to do the new book, when we get a chance to do it. Yes. Because we just have I'm excited this, too. then... Redemption season and then the new book that will come. I don't out. think I ever got redemption. I think I only got the three packs, so I'm gonna when have you need to redemption. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to pull that out when if I. <laughs> hey, hey, Black Friday Here's where I would buy games with my money if I had any. <laughs> yeah, I only have like twenty dollars in my account, and I don't get paid till Black Friday. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. All right. Wait. Are they do they are they coming from like a different um website? Uh, I picked my paychecks up by hand because I found I haven't set it up until now for a direct deposit. <laughs> oh no, I meant like uh the hero. No, they do come from project. a website, but you can get it. They, but you can get it on Steam. Like I have the. Hero All I see are the trilogy. Uh, on the site or on Steam? On Steam. Hold on. The redemption scene. I see versus the lost ones. A wise use of time. Diabolical. Oh, I found redemption. There you go. I found, I found, yeah, Hero Project Redemption. Yeah, because I also have from Choice of Games on my wish list. MetaHuman Inc., Community College Hero, Choice of Robots, and that's it. Hey, anyone who's streaming, you should buy me Cuphead, so I can play Cuphead. <laughs> also, buy me Cuphead, so I can play Cuphead with him. <laughs> also, buy me Bayonetta. <laughs> <laughs> if you just want, I can share my own Steam play wish list. Yeah, just just take a look at the Steam wish list yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. uh buy, it buy me the um buy me uh, the sixty dollar game I want too. Guess buy me the sixty. Which one do you want? The sixty dollars. 
you're not even gonna guess which is what game is the sixty dollar game. Uh, I'm super bad at guessing. Um, shit. Do you want me to give you a hint? Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, you know you're gonna cheat. I know you're <laughs> totally gonna cheat. <laughs> so we'll do it. Screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> Oh my god, of course. I want it. Of course you want that game. It actually looks really good. I've seen people play it and I um I knew I know someone who like literally shut down and didn't do anything else until they finished the game. Like I will I will seem dead until I finish this game. Yeah, I'm you just, told like, me that. You told good me that. For you. Yeah. You told me about that. Oh, I didn't tell you about about the whole low budget fiasco. Oh? Oh my god. Yeah, you you don't know about it. Oh, I got to tell you about it. I'm in fear. No, no, it's so, I, it's because of troll. And this hmm? is me pretty much telling the troll to go fuck themselves. Um, I gotta, I gotta find it. I gotta find it. Besides all the Christina and Elijah on Mari. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Okay, so here, here's what happened. So I put on Twitch, each stream I do makes a small dream of getting paid and sharing with others something I love to do, playing video games. And it's the same for each streamer. Like, the, the game, a lot of streamers want to be paid because they're doing something they love, and that's they're sharing what they do and playing video games. Mm -hmm. And paid and I, I had no... I, I didn't care which one was first. That's just how I wrote it. So I had someone tweet to me, the fact you put money first tells a lot about the kind of dreams you're really having. Like crashing a Bentley into a Rolex shop, buying set shop, putting wheels on that somehow, and crashing it into the river Mo in Monaco. So I went down, the nice. I did the reply, yeah, but when you're a broke grad student struggling to make ends meet, having money to pay my bills has to be a reality. Then I got dot, 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 dot. You already look like a low budget prostitute. Why why not go that route? Oh my fucking god. You told me about that last comment. Yep. Yep. That's and then, so No, then I replied, that's my drag wife, not me. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't responded he did since. So it's just kind of a middle finger. I now have it on my Twitter name that says Kim Low Budget in parentheses trans nerd guy. Oh my god. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's, how, kids, how you deal with trolls. Just show them you're not a bother. I'm nowhere near bother. I think it's hilarious because he thinks I'm pretty enough in of in because my picture on Twitter is me and drag. Pretty enough mm -hmm. to be considered a prostitute. I mean, hey. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright, now shall we begin? Uh, yes. Alright. You and Officer Standards, Sanders stand behind the garage. He furrows his bushy eyebrows. You've just caught up to his him up to speed about his situation with Miss Artillery. Well, that certainly explains a lot. Officer Sanders starts. But what if Protocol says it's true? Victor will have to be sure to cover his tracks very well. There's probably won't be a way to tell if she's lying or not until it's too late. Officer Sander looks at his meat chip and frowns. You don't have any time to discuss this further. Listen, I understand why you have to go to go with Protocol for now. I'll do the same if I were in your shoes. But you also have to know this before you go. Officer Sanders pauses, taking a deep breath. Protocol was the one to call your location into the place. I don't know what game she's playing this time, but Protocol is the reason we knew to come here for you both. Slugger. Those words hit you like a punch in the gut. And all you can think about is returning the punch to Protocol. Instead, you respond by saying, Prodigal must have wanted to force me into going with her. Just another sign I can't trust Prodigal. I have no idea she would do that. I mean, I have several ideas as to why she'd do that. It's not, not a surprise, but I think it's probably just yeah, her wanting to force. Personally. Like, she wanted to force me into going with her. Alright. Um... So the first one. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Well, she certainly has an interesting way of making allies, Officer Sanders says. says. Let's hope that's all it that's all it is, you sigh. Mm-hmm. 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 Like your <laughs> grandma. Um <laughs> Oh, oh, oh no, no. <laughs> Don't bring it back. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> You sit behind the controls of a hijacked police transport with Prodigal beside you, looking out at Officer Sanders and Grandma sitting in their own, own stolen MCPD hover bike. Uh, well. <laughs> I can figure that transport to get you wherever you need to go without any trouble if you play it smart. Officer Sanders says, I'll get myself and Mrs. Apple here to a secret safe house I've got stashed away for a rainy day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But once word of what I've done gets out here, I'm going to be in a world triple. So we'll have state communication blackouts or remain headed. I suggest you do the same. We all know why. Mm-hmm. You want to see the blackout with Grandma? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> let's be real, guys. <laughs> I just want some private time with Sanders. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You knew it's gonna happen again. You knew it. I knew, I know, I know. I'm trying to get myself together, guys, I really am. <laughs> the funny thing it's is for the kids. One of my friends uh um is one became from college is one of my is now one of my channel mods and I told him about this. I'm like, hey, if you want to count for the voice channel? Yeah, we... I don't have that. I don't have that command, Brett. I don't. I I, I don't have commands like that set up because I don't know how to set that up. <laughs> oh dear. I, I just know how to use mood bot for like basic basic stuff. <laughs> we, and that's something I'm gonna have to work on. Uh, YouTube tutorials. Time. Yes. Okay, if you can figure out how to set up the up time command, because I don't even know how to even set that up and stuff. Like, is this how long I've been streaming or whatnot? We'll figure it out and add it as a command. So. All right. Officer Sanders is right. All four of you are fugitives now. You're so grateful for what Officer Sanders is sacrificing for you. And you can add clearing his name to that long list of reasons you need to find Miss Altidori and bring the president down. A few minutes ago... Oh god, I get to use a grandma voice. A few minutes ago, you you were deciding what to do. Officer Sanders offered personally to protect grandma. You and grandma, I want to work on it and get read up on it. Alright, thank you, Brett. You and Grandma agree that it would be too dangerous for her to go with you and Prodigal, especially since you don't know how long you could trust Prodigal, if at all. So before you get into your respective tr- stolen transports, you hug Grandma, knowing it would be it would be the last chance you might have to talk for a while. Lip, you know you need to do whatever it takes to save your parents. Grandma says, already tearing up. I've been having some trouble with Grand's voice lately. I don't know what's going on. Maybe throw problems because of the oh weather? God, probably. I know that it means working w- with that witch. We know you want to say something else, Grandma. For mm-hmm. now, but make sure you keep both eyes open at all times. I will, Gran. You said forcing a lump back <laughs> down your throat. <laughs> this line's going to be so great at Grandma's voice. Ready? 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 I'm ready. I'm ready. Now go serve that victim bastard's balls on a platter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Grandma <laughs> nice. said, wiping her cheek. And don't forget this. Grandma handed you the letter you sent to your parents. She must have grabbed it somehow in all the chaos. Don't you ever forget where you come from. Grandma finishes. Or Matt, what matters most in all of this? I won't, I promise. I'm going to win this or at last. Oh, jeez. At last. <laughs> mm, I mean, all of them are good options. I don't see. I, I want to do the at last because that's an Apple thing. It's, it's, it's an Apple thing. All right. Oh, God, I can do your product again, too. Now with Grandma's words yep. still ringing in your ears, you watch as she speeds off the back of Officer Sanders' hover bike. 
Mm-hmm. That is until particle crowds yeah. controls of the police transport. That's you. <clears throat> yeah. I... Oh, okay. So it's just me. Yeah. Oh. Oh wait. Okay. I had to like figure out what tone that was. Oh, you do not. Please, chicken. Protocol interrupts. I'm a tech genius who makes toys like this for fun. Remember? Besides, I'm taking us to my, my most secret lair in Millennium City. Unless you have a better plan. You blink at Protocol because unfortunately you don't. <laughs> Divine! Now sit back and enjoy this ride, darling. As Protocol yes. sends you hurtling forward just under the train line, you figure out that enjoying anything is going to be fairly impossible for a while. 30 minutes later. After a tense and mostly silent why ride, you and Prodigal managed to make make it to a secret base undetected. Whatever Officer Sanders did to cover your the theft of the transport, paired with some quick rigged anti tech tracking tech from Prodigal, worked perfectly. Except now you stand outside a Toy Store in the Easter fringes with Prodigal, the same one that was your favorite as a kid. Uh, <clears throat> your base is here. You nearly shout. Is there no end to the bottomless pit of Prodigal's creepiness? <laughs> I feel like that's a loaded question. Right. I just realized I don't have a bottle of water or anything. Oh no. Shit. That's not good for your voice. No, I'm gonna go get one real, real quick. And, right. and you can see my um my BR my new BRB screen. Awesome. There we go. Awesome. Awesome. So always remember, guys, stay well hydrated because you could end up hurting your voice otherwise. And that would suck. This has been a PSA. <laughs> Beautiful. So, how's everybody doing today? Are we good? Everyone doing fine and dandy? I do hope so. I'm really bad at entertaining people on my own. This is what nerds here for. This is not my forte. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Did you see my new <laughs> overlaid, by the way? Yes, and I approve. <laughs> but I'm also just good. like, I'm also uh, kind of slightly a little bit um, scarred <laughs> in that entrance. It's like, well, that was not what I was expecting. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> My friend Brett. Um, first he said you were a little too loud, but I'm like, oh no, that's me because you're on like 200% on my Discord. And then it's like, you just got to be uncomfortable. That's what I do in my streams and that seems to work. Oh my God. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. Amazing. All right. Okay, so. All right. Where was that? All right. Relax, Jetpack, prodigal size. I think you think a star park is stolen police transport. It's not my favorite sacred hideout. You're so lucky you have me, or you'll be caught in five minutes flat. Prodigal whips up a homemade lock pick to get into the dark toy store. I got a tail lock to to the base there. The only way to get in or out of a doorless or windowless room created by some wickedly diabolical, beautiful mind. You ever seen the Ronald Prodigal's golden tail lock since she used um. Oh, this is the one she used to pull you into her lair underneath the Big Sure fusion plant. So many fond memories, you think, as you follow Prodigal. <laughs> love that, uh, <laughs> love that sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Once inside, Prodigal points to a not-for-sale display case filled with rare, rare action figures. Well, can you guess which one is my precious? Prodigal sings. You have no patience for Particles games, but then again, you already know which figure it is. The gold cast version of my Hero of Tomorrow action figure. The limited gold edition of the Sound and Fury figures. The Death Wave action figure set, which features me, my parents, Miss Artillery, Prodigal, and a golden Death Wave suit. An exact replica of my parents' ring, golden engagement ring, before it was destroyed, right down to the lyrics at last. Um... So how narcissistic do we want to be? <laughs> You're right. Right. Um, hmm. Bro. I, I want to do the Death Wave one because yeah, it's prodigal. Yeah. It's prodigal. She would love it's it. It's prodigal, yeah. yeah. That that would be her most yeah. precious. Okay. Not wanting prodigal, not waiting for prodigal, you open the case and snatch the golden tunnel lock, then grab a prodigal. Wait, there's something I need to tell you! Before prodigal finishes, you're enveloped in a flash teleport energy and you close your eyes. When you open your eyes again, you find yourself in a windowless room. The walls are lined with pictures of you, ranging from your tween years all the way to last <laughs> year, posing in your original Captain Hammer costume. You'd be freaked out enough by the creepy collage, but then you see what's in the center of the room. Someone tied to a chair bound and gag someone who looks like Shonja Chala uh my Next, god yes prodigal what the slugger is wrong with you <clears throat> words slip out of your mouth before you can form a coherent thought though the moment you do you realize this woman isn't Sonya she just looks an awful like lot like her, down to the black clothing, gold jewelry, and braid bun. You have no idea why Prodigal has kidnapped this woman, but your first priority is getting her free. See, I meant to explain this before we arrived. Prodigal sighs and she pulled off the ropes. That's Juni Shara, Shanja's sister. But I promise I mean no, har no harm. I mean, I just need her to... Bef but Juni... <laughs> <laughs> but Junie's fist connects with Prodigal's jaw before she can finish speaking. Nice. Do you want to do that voice? Uh, sure. I do most of the voices. Let's be real. Right. No. So I'm just trying to think, because I, I want I'll do the voice, but I don't want to be racist. So I'm trying to think of a good voice. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, when you forget everything. Um At least it's not like that Jam that vine Jamaican vine where someone's like do a Jamaican accent, they're like, um Oh god. 
Yeah. Um. Um. um don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you bring me here after what you did to my sister? Joey screams. Don't you know how many times I've dreamed of killing you? <laughs> Jesus, in the late Christ. It sounds a little bit like Fred Dasher. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sheffield. Oh, my fucking God. Right. I was trying to be like, I was watching an anime before this, and I'm like, pick a voice and try to imitate it, and I did a bad job. But the other one sounds too much like my voice, so yeah. it's the only one I had. Ugh. All right. You watch as Jenny lunges for Prodigal's throat, still trying to wrap your head around the fact that Sanja even has a sister. But as Jenny grabs Prodigal, you figure you should decide whether you should need to step in. Restrain her, let her punch Prodigal a couple times, or let her go to town. I mean... I, I want to let her get a few good shots, but we are like a... Uh... <laughs> We are a uh, lawful good, so we. I thought we were more chaotic should... good. I mean, hold on, let me look. <laughs> what the hell? We somehow we got to um have more security than freedom. Like what the shit? Yeah. What whoa. the shit? Like something happened. What the fuck? So we are kind of chaotic. You're like forty-seven lawful. 53 yeah. or no sorry 47 lawless 53 lawful we're, we're so i mean we could let her get a couple good shots yeah judy kicks particles in the stomach and then knees her in the chin and then when she looks like she's definitely had some and it looks like she's had some self-defense training once particles on the floor judy jumps on top of her <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> as much as you're enjoying this display, you decide it's time to intervene. You rush forward and peel her off a particle, restraining both arms behind her back. <laughs> I will decimate you, you murderous cow! <laughs> Judy screams, flailing in your arms. Prison can't hold you? Fine! I'll finish this! <laughs> I love this. Jenny lost in full on rage mode. She's my new favorite character. <laughs> and you can blame her since this must have been the lair where Prodigal killed Sanja. What does oh well good Prodigal cops. But notice how I let lip here undie you and how you identify back at all. I'm not gonna hurt you. I need your help. You need my help? You need my help? Judy Steve. <laughs> Judy screams, I will end you! I admit it's an unlikely scenario, Prodigal tries, but there's no one else to call on with such short notice. We need your unique skill set. Hey, crazy face, you cut in. Did you ever think kidnapping and restraining Judy might not have been the best way to call on her? Well, I don't. The Prodigal mother shrugs. Old habits. <clears throat> and what the slugger are you doing here with her? Dewey says, twisting to face you. Don't you think for a second I forgive your part in this? Slugger, that one stings. If you were wondering why you haven't heard from Sanja's sister since she's died, you just got your reason. I understand that you're upset, you say. But I swear I'm here for a very good reason. Yes, little lamb, and if you simmer down, you just see I've got quite a journalistic opportunity for you. Particle cuts in. But it seems that we three musketeers at least have one common goal right now. Taking down the meek movement and President Victon. Hearing this, Juni pauses. I know you've been doing some deep undercover reporting against the meek movement. Particle adds, you and your sister have always had different ideas of what constructs as journalistic integrity, don't you? <clears throat> <clears throat> Don't you ever talk to me about my sister, you witch, Jewie says, breaking free of your grasp. You don't move to stop her, but she crosses her she just crosses her arms and looks from you to prodigal. You better explain yourselves quickly. Never. 
Uh, I'd listen to her. <laughs> I'm kind of scared of her. <laughs> <laughs> Prodigal has been walking Junie through everything through everything she's already told you. Which, while Junie hasn't exploded into another rage, she still looks very unsettled. You really can't blame her because you're equally unsettled. Being in this place turns your stomach for more of reasons than you can count. Your eyes have been wandering around Particle's base and you find yourself your most creeped out by. The pictures of you lining the wall, the video feed of my old apartment filming the new residence, the spare sp sparrow feather suit hanging on the wall, or the Miss Artillery action figure. I wouldn't be I mean, down about an action figure of my mom. Like, Yeah, no, I mean... I... I... Well, at the same time, like... I genuinely would be creeped out of either pictures of me everywhere or uh probably like the apartment so I'm like I'm, I mean come on we are a very attractive very uh well known gay man <laughs> And uh, how how long has she been watching us? Because I'm sure we haven't been doing all the uh, most noble things. <laughs> We're a very active gay man, after all. All right, so um, <laughs> filming my old apartment. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I guarantee you we sat there um, moving one out thinking of Lucky. <laughs> That's what I was alluding to. And, and of black magic coming into our room and touching us before he became a giant juice bag. Right. Mm -hmm. Yikes. Then your eye. <laughs> then your eyes settle on a cage in the corner. They nearly bulge out of your head because sleeping inside is what it looks like to be a pterodactyl parrot dino hybrid. The last time you might have seen a parrot like this was in Tracker's apartment. Could it possibly be the same one? You begin to sort through the many reasons why keeping a dino hybrid in a lair like this is insane, but then your earth directed by Junie finally speaks. So, why do you need me? She asks flatly. Well, yeah, as flatly as you <laughs> apparently can. <laughs> you see, particle starts. I've been doing some things in my past that might make select few questions of integrity in my world. Your eyes meet Junie, and you actually see the sheriff moment. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Ignore this, particle moves on. Oh, oh hi. hi. Wait, do we have a wild Brandon in? <gasps> well, Brandon, uh, wild Andrew uh, entered us through. Yeah. Yay. We have people. We have people. It's nice to see you again, Brandon. I'm. Oh they no! Told me and Officer Sanders are done right now. We're locked in a, our own little secret hideaway with a communications blackout. <laughs> like no joke, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> but but seriously, yeah. But but yes. Uh, hold on, I need to hey. up the volume on Brandon. It, it is Andrew though. It's Andrew now. Okay, Andrew. Yeah. There we go. You're also like really, really like hush, hush. And I'm like, okay, I need to increase this volume. Really? Because uh, uh, he gets uh, a little loud for me. <laughs> no, not. They I probably not turned him up. Me. Yeah. They weren't turned up on mine. I think I turned him up before, and so now I'm like, Wah. it's a little loud for me. Wow. Okay. Wah. Wah. Pappy Waffles is here. Hey, Brett. That is actually a friend of mine from college. What's <laughs> up? What's up, man? Not a lot. Just grabbed a hodgepodge of audio equipment to get set up. Uh, oh. I Beautiful. Can, I could just imagine like, it now, but then my mind's going to what we would do in college. Yeah, it, it's, it's so weird. Like, uh... I actually need to mute my TV now that I have the party chat because you guys are going to hear yourselves echo if I don't. 
because I had the stream. All right, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can hear us echoing. I take it um, the wife is at work again. Yeah, she's uh, she's working five in a row this week. Uh, started, uh, I think, it's two days ago now. Something like that. Uh, yeah, she she's worked two days because uh, she had Wednesday off and then Thursday, Friday, and then this is day three of five. Oh, so wow. she's working five 12 hour shifts in a row, night shift on oncology floor at the hospital. Oh my God. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's been crazy. Uh, I'm bad. Yeah, that would be. Oh, I, I'm putting so. No! No, I I I was gonna share because I'm on Instagram too because we all know I multitask, and like Tyler Posley's Instagram story, somebody's in the stove with their feet hanging out. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, what me today. Well, some days it's just like that, you know. I know. Yeah. Animal. Yes, no. Uh, somebody, some random guy called Whiskey and Weed Forty Five, sent me a wiki face. Whiskey and weed? I mean, not a horrible combo. Uh, no, I thought you said I mean, weave. Whiskey and weed. weed. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's a, it's a blazing. Blazing. All right. All right, because right, we're going to keep going off topic like hell. Let's be real. For real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I I, I'm going to try to be actively chatting, but at the same time, I'm over here playing this new Pokemon game. Oh, yeah, I just, I sold a couple of those today at work. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm far too poor to have the equipment to actually stream a Pokemon game on the 3DS. Oh, same. Because it costs, it costs like $400 to get what what is essentially a ruined 3DS. Oh my because God. you have to get somebody to break the warranty. Uh, I, but yeah, yeah. That, that's too much. That's too rich for my blood. That is so too rich for my blood. I I might find like some uh, late '90s webcams and stream it that way. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like how go, the go first that, webcam will. was invented. Yeah, like. There was one at a Goodwill the other day. Uh, we were in uh, Alyssa's grandmother's neck of the woods, and it was like a 1998 model Logitech webcam back when they were like the size of a baseball and round. Oh my god! Uh, it had a stand and everything. I very nearly bought it, but I'm like, "Will my computer even run this? Does it? Is it so old that it won't accept?" what's going on with this camera i oh, may God. have a spare one in my place that i can g easily give you if you want i mean it's that would be is balls but i can give it to you if you want it later yeah that that would be balling because i have nothing except for like the cam on my laptop and uh needless to say that's that's a laptop cam yeah <laughs> yeah so and i know how to set obs to stream from a webcam, 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 instead oh of goodness. your laptop cam. I do know how to do that. Uh -huh. So yeah, like, uh, I'm, where I'm OBS Studio, I was exploring that the other day, and if I had multiple cams, like if I have the laptop cam and another cam, then I can set uh two cam panels and have one like on a screen and one on face cam yeah and it would be really easy to do yeah uh, I'm, a, I'm off tomorrow if you want to meet up and i can give that to you and help you out with obs a bit that sounds chill uh i'm not sure when Alyssa will be awake the first half of the day she tends to sleep because she doesn't get home until like eight in the morning yeah i know that feeling that's gonna be me all next week with work because i'm going back to the stock room and like tuesday next week i gotta be at work at 2 a.m 
because Damn. they're they are Black Friday. We're getting ready for Black Friday at Target, guys. We're gonna die. <laughs> Keep me in your thoughts. I hope you don't die. Immortal word. I hope I don't die. Trinket. May the odds be ever in your favor. Uh, oh, horribly off key. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah I mean, that's, that's, that's hardly across. recognizable. Okay, you know what? Testosterone fucks with your voice, clearly. <laughs> like, Brett knows how my voice was before the testosterone. To the fact yeah, when we no. ran into each other, like, the first time ever since college, him and his wife didn't recognize me. Yeah, because it it had been uh, what a few years since we had either one of us seen you. Um, it like almost a couple years. Yeah, like I knew it had been a long time. Like she knew who you were. It it didn't take her as long, but when you turned your back to go and sign up for the cosplay stuff, I I looked at her and I'm like, I know I know this person. <laughs> who the fuck are they? What the fuck are you? <laughs> Who the fuck are you? And then she told me, and I was like, okay, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, like, since college, I have, like, 17 tattoos. I'm doing testosterone. I'm about to get... Go... Oh, yeah, which, by the way, I actually have set up the consultation appointment to get my... to have gender reassignment surgery on my top half. Oh, sweet. Ah, mm-hmm. Nice. Good for yeah. you. Yeah, so me now, compared to how I was in college, I, I look like two different people. The, the, the difference between me now and me in college is now I'm fat and sober. Yeah, we've talked about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, cat. Stop that nonsense right now. Oh, and doing that caused my um OBS to get confused for a second. Oh, God. <laughs> Like, it's flashing back and forth. There we go. We're back on green. All right. Okay, so now let's get back to the Hero Rises, Hero Fall. All right. You you saved me from both playing Pokemon and watching Pokemon on Twitch when you said you were live. So (laughs) uh, I just want you to thank me. uh, I I want to thank you for uh, keeping me from wasting my life. Uh, I've already logged 24 hours in this game. Oh my god. Oh boy. Okay. Oh my god. Alright, so let's get back to this. Alright. I need you to use your investigative powers to take a look through my memories and let him see for himself that I'm not lying about any of this. Wait, you can do that? You asked Train to Juhi? Yes, Juhi says, without (laughs) (laughs) follow-up. No wonder both of these sisters became reporters. Sonia had a full range of photographic and tracking powers, but it it sounds like Juhi's powers go even deeper than that. Who would better to verify my story that someone who who hates my guts has no incentive to lie on my behalf and to who Liv is inclined to trust? Prodigal finishes. Junie turns to you and sighs. She looks like she's entering Prodigal's mind. She looks like entering Prodigal's mind is the last thing she ever wants to do. And you don't disagree. Yeah, because probably our minds, besides like, I gotta save my parents. Lucky, 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 lucky. Mm-hmm. lucky, lucky. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, Brett, for you to know, we appear- our romance option in this game was a superhero named Lucky, who was our first gay crush when we were kids, and has the ability to explode his limbs and regrow them. Good shit. Exactly. Absolutely good sh- Better than our boy- boyfriend in the first game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> On a totally different note, I just want you to know, I have the video for the stream going in two different places, but now I have the source audio being in the chat. So I've got the video muted, and I'm playing a game of trying to see when what you've said on the chat happens in the video. I have like a few seconds <laughs> delay between them, so. Yeah, I, I figured as much. That's uh totally normal. 
uh like i've got delay in my streams but uh yeah Yeah. it's it's just an interesting game to me it is (laughs) i keep my twitch stream up so i can see everybody's comments and make sure it's running smoothly so it's really fun for me too yeah i'm in theater mode on my computer so that i can uh do mod things yes yes (laughs) All right, so, all right. I, uh, look, I'm sorry. I brought you here against your will, Prodigal says, gnashing her teeth like she's forcing to say every word through her lips. But you're free to go whenever you please. Our time is short, so if you're not going to help. Junie clenches her jaw, still looking undecided. You consider that Prodigal, what Prodigal has just said. If you could really verify that Prodigal is telling the truth about Miss Artillery, that would be one less concern you have to worry about moving forward. So you turn to Junie and say, Please, I need to know if Prodigal is lying and if I'm going to have any shot at saving my parents. If we find out Prodigal is lying, I'll kill her for you. (laughs) (laughs) I've never dreamed of asking you this under any circumstances, but you're here already and I need you. I know you don't know me, but Sonja believed in me. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. ooh. Yeah, Screw no, every- not a smart idea. Yeah. No, actually, that could be really good. It's just heartstring. Ooh. Screw <laughs> everything else. Just think of the anti meek reporting opportunity you might have here. I'm either the first one or playing the dead sister card. <laughs> that oh, sounds of course. so bad. <laughs> yeah, that sounds a little, a little bad. A little bit. Um. Yikes. Um I guess the dead sister card. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that response. Ooh. And look what that that response. Ooh. Yeah. And look where that got her. Dewey shout, uh, shoots back, causing your heart to drop to your feet. <laughs> Dewey close her, uh, closes her eyes, obviously having an internal conversation with herself. Then she opens her eyes and looks directly at you. Fine, I'll do it, she finally says. But on one condition, after we're done, I want, I want continued and unfettered access to report on your prog- progress. I think I hear my dad cheering on RuPaul's Jack Grace. <laughs> oh hearing, my god. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> my dad is the gayest straight man in Roanoke. Like, he really is. Awesome. That's always a good thing. Yeah, he just told me, I, just, I started following Jinx Monsoon yesterday on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, my queen! <laughs> my queen! Alright. You know we're fugitives now, you say. Associate, associating with us will... I can take care of myself, Juhi Kudson. Do we have a deal? You look at Prodigal and, th- Prodigal and think, what choices do you have? So you and Prodigal both nod. Then let's get to work, Juhi finishes. You sit in a circle jerk. Um, I mean circle with, <laughs> <laughs> with Juni and Prodigal all holding hands. <clears throat> Everyone, close your eyes and prepare your mind, Jewy says. This isn't an exact science, but if product that prodigal focuses on the right memories, we should see only what we need inside her thoughts. Are we ready? I feel like there needs to be a kumbaya joke here. I really do. Right. <laughs> Zach, you missed a golden opportunity. Yes, you say, suddenly experiencing a rush of dizziness. You feel turned upside down, so you force your eyelids shut until the spinning stops. When it does, you open your eyes to find you're in a submarine, one that sits cracked open on an airstrip. You look around and you realize you're, you are in some kind of abandoned military bus, base. The looking isn't quite what you should call it. Your body isn't active here, but you're somehow still aware of your surroundings. You feel like some kind of ghost incorporating floating, and you can see Juni and Prodigal's presence nearby too. I'm loving the Harry Potter reference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then you see the actual f- physical prodigal across the inside the land wreck submarine, and you remember you witness you're witnessing one of her memories. This would do white nightly, don't you think, Terry? 
prodigal sayings, twirling a pet par parrot, which must be the same one you saw in the, her French lair just now. It has the same raw pink skin, interpreted with colorful feathers. Terry the parrot screeches and tries to snatch his prodigal with a claw of wings, but her wings play is too short, and prodigal easily sidesteps the swipe. Who would have thought my death wave would clear out so much lovely abandoned lair space? Prodigal continues while Terry limps alongside. Terry doesn't look so good, like she's sick or something. You're not surprised. If Prodigal is still in the Big Sur Raceland, the levels of radiation are bound to be highly toxic. Though you're not sure why it doesn't affect Prodigal. Maybe she's somehow immune to it since her powers partially feel the whole thing? Oh god. <laughs> Squawk! War space! A dead everywhere! Terry suddenly oh, croaks. Oh Chicken's blood, squawk! <laughs> what a stunning poem, my dear Terry! <laughs> Prodigal chimes. You are without doubt the best addition to my apple cast off collection! Prodigal smiles as she sits down oh at the computer. <laughs> what? I was just like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Prodigal smiles as she sits down at a computer console. You see that she's customized the panel. There are several re-rigged screens and processors attached to the console. Probably savage from other abandoned crafts on the space. And you can't help but notice a video feed on one of the screens, which displays a prison cell that appears to be holding some prodigal in solitary confinement. You can't tell if this is a fake prison prodigal is some kind of hollow projected or decoy but knowing particles insane imagination nothing would surprise you what a truly fitting home indeed particle hums petting terry's feathers neck as she perches beside the computer console terry tries to snap at particle's fingers with a long beak particle just dodges her tips absentmindedly a planetary base befitting a queen a perfect place for some fresh scheme and since we both know my powers only operate on their peaks when i'm raising war protocol says looking down at her console controls let's start a new one shall we squawk war life murder war ignoring tank's crook she can't help but think learning that protocol needs to be at war for her powers to work correctly explains so much. The military base layer can't be too far away from Kolek's castle headquarters. Do Terry's ramblings actually mean anything? Hmm. I think the like the first one. Okay. As this thought crosses your mind, you find yourself suddenly standing inside a giant missile silo with dozens of armed warheads, each striped red, named Prodigy. You turn to see Jenny standing next to you, then you look down to see your own body has appeared as well. <clears throat> uh. Oh, okay. Sorry. I jumped ahead accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a moment, Jewy says. We shouldn't have be physically present and where is prod uh but juhi is interrupted as the missiles all shift and lock into position pointed at you nobody is supposed to be here a robotic voice announces over <laughs> um oh my god a robotic voice announces over Lucy. Give me one reason to stay here and I'll turn back around. Oh my god. <laughs> he whispers. Uh, Juni? <laughs> what is this? I saw Prodigal's mind was fractured when we entered it, but I didn't think it would. Juni trails off, her eyes growing wide as she looks around. I think Prodigal's mind is booby trapped somehow. That slugging wish, which should have warned us that. What should we do? You interrupt, sensing that things are about to get very nasty very quickly. I think Chewie starts. Okay, Prodigal wants us in here, so we see certain memories. So if we finish the tour according to her desires, her mind should let us go. But if we enter uninvited areas like this, we're going to have to clear them by tricking her mind into believing we belong here. 
then we should be able to move on, I think. Uh, and if we don't? Prepare to die! <laughs> Prodigal's mind voice ch chimes in. Uh, what she said. <laughs> Juhi says, backing away. I don't think we can actually die since we're not really here, but we can definitely get lost, bouncing from broken memory to broken memory forever. You're not quite sure how any of this is possible, but you also don't have time to work it all out right now, because being trapped and tortured in prodigal's crazy mind forever sounds like the very definition of hell. Oh so... <laughs> we're in hell, guys. Welcome to hell. Uh, so how are you going to convince prodigal's fractured mind that you're not a hostile entity? Repeat one of Terry's squawk croak keywords. So, we're reporting for war, Commander Prodigal. Uh, threaten Prodigal. She responds best to war after all. Um. Uh, repeat one of Terry's croak words. That probably would be the best, yeah. Oh, God. Uh oh, to... no. Uh, was, like, murder... Murder blood one? Or so. Croak word. <laughs> I am screwed because I don't remember any of it. Murder. Uh, um, it was like chicken blood. murder, chicken blood was one. war. Huh? Chicken blood. Chicken blood? Yes. So oh, it's... but it didn't work. Um. No, go, the voice booms right before explosions begin to rock the room. Then the floor drops from underneath you, and you begin to mid-drop through a dark pit, pain riding, riding through your body as you fall. Oh, um, dear. When you finally land, you're back in Prodigal's land wreck submarine, starting from the beginning of the memory tour as if nothing happened. It looks like you're going to have to do a better job of navigating Prodigal's mind if you ever want to escape this winding memory maze. I am f chicken's blood. I did chicken blood. Oh. Yeah. War space, artillery ward, then chicken's blood. So. I, I, I'm going to redo the chicken's blood. I'm, I'm just like going through that thing all over again. So. War yeah, space, artillery. Snips. Snip forward. All right, I'm back on re where we have to repeat one of his words. Okay. Okay. Hi. Okay. It was war space. Our, our. Ch I'm doing tills. chicken's blood. Just it. That's S. it. Yeah, because I didn't do it with the S. <gasps> oh. No! What, did you do? misspell it? I misspelled it, yep. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. So, it was capitalized, right? Chicken. I didn't capitalize. Okay. Ah, okay, fine! <laughs> I I'm 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 good now. Yeah, I got it. you got it. Mhm. Mm okay. There's a deafening screech, and you feel yourself rocket upwards. Juhi screams behind you, and you brace yourself. But when you finally stop reeling, you find that you're incorporeal again. You must have cleared the first mind trap to view another memory. Prodigal stands in front of her submarine console again, looking up at a screen that shifts display Maravictin in a hotel suite. As soon as the picture becomes clear, though, the screen shorts and blacks out. Alright. Wait, what? Okay, um, are you on Prodigal since in front of her console again? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I read the sits in front of her. Yeah. 
Okay. How do they keep finding ways to jam my surveillance signals? Prodigal screams. Oh, I'm not fucking screaming that shit. You can go fuck yourself. Prodigal screams, looking. Um, exhausted and overtaxed, junk food wrappers and litter the floor of the submarine, and it looks like she hasn't showered in days. I suppose I just have to invent another one, she sighs before going back to work on the console. Waves of clear energy emanating from her hands as she does. Realizing you have a few seconds to survey the submarine, the first thing you notice is a collage of the nearest wall, which is a combination of, of colorful holler projection and printouts. You focally, mostly focus on... A list that reads the Hero Project potential Cabal members. Outlines to pretend infinity plots. Transcripts of me messages sent to you during the early parts of the Hero Project. A display, a screen displaying the final for Midtown Tunnel Hero Project episode. The transcripts. That's what I say. It's yes. Transcripts. All right. Obviously, Prodigal was tracking all this for his latest plot. Though, not surprisingly, it looks like the work of a crazy person. Probably it only makes any sense to you because you've lived it all. Okay. Squawk, roar death, chemo kill. Terry chokes out. You try to turn to a cage. You turn to a cage beside the console and see that Terry even looks worse than before, worse than prodigal. Her cage floor is lined with shed feathers and trickle of blood falls from her left, her left eye. That was not the time for your gorgeous musings, Terry. Particle says, I must. Green light. Operation Artillery. The sound bite cuts through the screen before the footage of Victon shorts out again. But it's enough to shut Particle up as she stares now the blank screen frozen in her seat. What? Ah! She the Particle looks up to the screen, her lip quivering. Mother? Video and audio disabled, the console response. It followed me, Tech! Prodigal screams, slamming her fist on the console. I must find the air engineer and call for fingertips! Can you at least give me a location of the signal call? No. Carry us, sir, and carry us, sir. Prodigal hums, clasping her hands together. It looks like I'm going to have to launch a little operation artillery of my own. Prodigal's words are still ringing in your ears when you suddenly realize that you actually have ears. You're solid again. You're standing in a pink painted child's room with Miss Artillery sitting in a rocking chair and a toddler in her app. That must be Prodigal. You can do the mother. Uh, alright. <clears throat> oh god, I have nothing. My darling little girl. I have a very important lesson to teach you today. Miss Artillery coos, rocking back and forth in her chair and combing baby prodigal's hair with a pink brush. You must learn not to rely on this man's world. Not even your father, the ruthless criminal he was, could not be trusted. That's why I murdered him the moment you were conceived. <laughs> but that's not today's true lesson. Miss Artillery whispers, kissing Prodigal's forehead. Today, I'm going to teach you how to die. Yikes. Well. That's some fucked up shit. I mean, it's clearly been a while since I've played this. You can keep Yeah. Reading. Uh, Miss Artillery holds up the brush to reveal a hidden bomb trigger at its base. She promptly trips it, her eyes flashing a crimson shade of red. Oh, you have got to be kid. Before you- Oh, that's me. Oh, you have got to be kid. Before you can finish, the explosion rocks through the room and sends you hurtling backwards. You keep flying, shards of scattered memory whipping around you. You're still free-falling. You try desperately to grab onto something. When your fingers finally grasp something solid, you realize that it's a dinosaur's neck? A massive needle, or myself. That type of stuff just bothers me. Huh? That stuff just bothers me. It's like so much. Just needle. Massive needle, especially. Oh. And it's hilarious because I have tattoos and piercings galore. <coughs> <coughs> and that tends to be actually kind of common. Yeah. Um. Dinosaur? Yeah, I'm, I'm. Yeah. 
I mean, you can read for a little bit. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're in a dirty room with crumbling brick everywhere and streaks of sunlight pouring through the holes in the walls. You look around to try to get your bearings and see that you're in some kind of lab, one that was abandoned a long time ago from the looks of it. Then you spot something else in the corner, a young prodigal playing with a brontosaurus giraffe dino hybrid on a soiled mattress. Let's oh. you. Bowen, what a perspectively long neck you have. Prodigal giggles, hanging on the Bronfo Raffle's neck. He bays playfully, nudging Prodigal's side. Is this where Prodigal was living? How did she end up in an abandoned lab with illegal dinosaur hi with an illegal dinosaur hybrid, no less? No wonder Prodigal has a thing for dino hybrids, if this was her only friend growing up. Then there's a bright flash, and suddenly you're back in the submarine again. This time, Prodigal looks even more ragged. She has herself strapped into some elaborate contraption, wriggling into a headpiece that has wires tucked deep into her ears. In the background, you notice the Hero Project finale playing on one of the college screen, uh, collage screens. You again. All right. Well, Terry... This might just kill me, Prodigal says, wincing as she recalibrates the whole main machine. But I didn't stop all of my drop all my scheming to come here this far and quit. So what if Victon, um, Victon has destroyed any trace of my mother? I'll go to the one place he can erase his memories. Squawk Death Race. Terry croaks, now sporting an eye patch over her left eye. You also see some of her feathers appear to be re sewn into her rough pink skin. Mary Roar! Squawk! I could have said it better myself, darling. Prodigal grass, obviously in a great deal of pain from whatever this contraction is doing for her. We're embarking on a truly preposterous undertaking. This kind of memory surveillance will is unprecedented, and I'll be stretching my powers to the limit just for a few seconds of memory. But what's the fun in that? If being infinity, if we can't break a few fundamental laws of physics. Oh boy. Trying to force one last smile, Prodigal then flips on her machine and screams at the top of her lungs. And as she does, you're suddenly sucked forward. You see in front of you, very clearly, a younger judge victim standing in his robes with Miss Artillery. They're outside of Morgue, and Miss Artillery still has pale skin like she's been dead for a while. You play the your part perfectly, Judge Victon says, pointing towards the nearby hover chair. Now you get to disappear forever, sweet slugger. If it's true, Miss Artillery really did fake her death at your parents' hand, and it was arranged by Victon himself. Oh boy! Before you can even process what you just seen, Prodigal shrieks even louder, and the stolen memory is torn to pieces. You are tugged backwards through the machine into a vast office lot, one that overlooks a crystal blue ocean. On the walls, you see several Infinity Regulator prototypes with green and gold seals, so you figure you must be at some meek HQ, or rather, that's where Prodigal's memory is located. I follow this long-winded road all the way here, Mother Darling. You hear Prodigal's voice and spot her saying in front of a giant hollow follow cabinet. You better be alive, you beautiful nightmare. Prodigal takes a deep breath and opens a file drawer marked Operation Artillery. It pulls out a hollow file that play that displays a picture of Miss Artillery. Um fuck. Miss Artillery <laughs> looking much older <laughs> than you saw her. And with this time stamp at the bottom right corner dated earlier this year. With tears in her eyes, Prodigal goes to open another hollow marked prison transfer location, but the vial begins to self destruct. Slugger, you think, as you sit flying once again. How many explosions can one mind contain? Time to go back to. What, what the fuck is this? Back to Millennium City, our old dear friend Lip. And you can go do that. Right. <clears> hmm. <throat> You hear Prodigal's voice, but you can't see her. The only 
Oh, there's only black blackness and an incredible, unbreakable feeling of con connection to you, Lip, to a Lip Apple, to Captain ha Hammer. Somehow you are both the question and the answer. You can't tell the feel. You can tell the feeling isn't yours, that you're both within and without. But it's very hard to keep anything clear in here. Then. The darkness lifts and you wish it hadn't because you see Juhi in front of you, solid and stuck to a giant s silvery spider web. No. You move to help her, but you realize that your limbs are stuck too. Then you sense it behind you, the shadow of its eight le massive legs falling across your body. <laughs> you smell... The smell of rotting carcasses fills your nostrils and you just know it. You know the mind spider is ready to devour you. The password. It hisses like a snake. So close to you, you can feel it. So close you can feel its breath on you. <laughs> your neck <laughs> you resist the urge to scream or vomit and instead you rack your brain for one word that might save you. Um, Eat me, intertwined, uh, Bronwyn, explosion, dampen, artillery. I demand. I demand a power bonus. <laughs> <laughs> um, artillery. Yeah, artillery. God damn. Uh, if that right? that's what you want. This mind spider hisses. As you feel your fang as you feel fl fangs close around your neck, you suddenly begin to mind drop through a dark pit, pain riddling through your body as you fall. When you land, you're back to uh, victim in artillery's meeting, da starting from the beginning of that memory as if nothing happened. It looks like you're gonna have to do a better job of navigating Prodigal's mind if you ever want to escape this memory maze. Fuck your shit, I'm out. Okay. So that wasn't it. Yeah. Is it Ronwyn? Wait, hold on. I gotta do it again. Okay. I gotta like go back to that entire thing. Um, Luckily it can. wasn't like too far. We could do Ronwyn. Okay. Oh yes. Yes! yes! You open your eyes, embraced for the worst, especially when you hear Juhi screaming beside you. Then your eyes adjust and you realize you're back in the real world, inside Prodigal's fringe lair. You never thought you'd be so excited to be back here, though you suppose you never did really leave, at least not physically. You <laughs> crazy, Juhi gasps. Could have died. I never... You look from Juhi to Prodigal and find her sitting there with a blank expression, tears sliding down her cheeks and blood running out of her nose. I need a transitional moment. Prodigal whispers and walking towards the corner while Terry still sleeps in her cage. Prodigal starts to stroke Terry through the barge, choking back what sounds like sobs. What the slugger was that? You whisper as you turn to Juhi, not sure what else to ask. Simply put, that was Prodigal's mind, Juhi sighs, her breathing slowly returning to normal. I'm inclined to be furious with her, but I don't think she knows how hostile her mind would seem to us. Everyone's brain functions differently. There's no way to predict how someone else's thoughts will work. Wait, do you mean that's how Prodigal always experiences her thoughts? You ask. I don't know, Juhi tries. I know very little of this makes sense, but m maybe it's not supposed to. Powered people are able to do things never possible before. So who knows the science behind any of this? But the best I can tell, what Prodigal just explained is kind of like being in a dream. Everything in the dream makes perfect sense until the moment you wake up. I think, maybe, <laughs> seeing her mind from our outside perspective like that, Juhi pauses, looking deeply haunted. I think maybe she just woke up a little. To be honest, I could be talking nonsense, <laughs> Juhi goes on. <laughs> I've rarely been that deep inside anyone else's mind. I usually only... 
have to skim the surface to find what I need. There's no room to lie or fabricate when I enter someone's mind. It's all raw memory and truth. A chill runs up your spine at the thought of what your own mind might look like, invaded and analyzed like that. Would you be able to handle what you saw in there, unfiltered and laid totally bare in front of strangers, with no room to lie to yourself, no shred of denial or realization? What would you find? I almost feel bad for her, if that were ever possible, Juhi continues. What it prodigal has been through, her childhood, her incredible power... She obviously has a very hard time connecting to reality, though you seem to be a rather wrong, strong tether, a rather strong tether for her. I'm just sitting here, like, thinking, they're literally, she's literally going on this, like, long speech, and Prodigal's right there. <laughs> Crying. Right, like, she's right there, and it's like, she's in the room, guys. <laughs> um, Juhi raises an eyebrow as she says this. All you can think is, I felt firsthand how deeply connected Prodigal feels to me. Her obsession makes a bit more sense now. Prodigal has been driven crazy by her terrible life. I'm even more convinced now that Prodigal is insane and insanely different and dangerous. It, uh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever her intentions, Prodigal's unpredictability is a major liability. I feel a bond to Prodigal, one that might have always been there. I'm guessing that's where the romance goes. Bow. Uh, <laughs> the bond I feel to Prodigal bow. might be more than just one of her. Like, oh, two options there. Okay. Mm. But we're gay for mm. lucky. No, I know we gay. We super gay. We super gay. I um, will say I feel a bond to Prodigal, one that might have always been there. Okay, sure, yeah. Right. I know that was highly unpleasant for everyone, Prodigal says, walking back towards you and Junie. She still holds Terry in her arms, and the pertit wheezes through its sleep like she's very alive. But now do you believe me? You look at Junie, and she nods at you. You now see proof that Miss Otillery is not, oh, not only faked her death at the hands of your parents, but she might also still be alive. Now you know everything I do, Prodigal continues. I believe that despite whatever deal Victon made with my mother all those years ago, she was subconsciously taken against her will and held captive. You look away from Prodigal, of course. That's what she truly wants to believe. Because if Miss Artillery left willingly, that means she would have truly abandoned Prodigal all these years, leaving her to fend for herself. And I know what you're thinking! Unless we forget, I'm not the only poor little orphan in this room. Besides, we all saw the hollow fire on Miss Artillery's folder before it self-destructed. Prisoner, prisoner, transfer, location. Whether or not Miss Artillery left willingly back then, or it sure seems like she's being held against her will back now. Fine, but if they have her, why haven't they just killed her? Juhi cuts in. She's too much of a liability to victim to be kept alive. That drops the that... Silence into oh, the yeah. room because <laughs> Junie is very right. I've been asking myself the same question, Prodigal says. The only reason that I can think of is that somehow unable to kill her. I think it's possible my mother's death illusion power keeps protecting her, that she can't even be murdered by external causes. That would certainly explain whatever research they are doing on Operation Artillery. If that's the case, you say, then the fact that Victon and the Meek now have weaponized power dampeners is a very bad thing. Hence my sense of urgency, Prodigal says. They've only developed a way to dampen infinity powers, not yet normal powers, but we've seen it all now. They're getting very close. Well, we can't know for sure what the reason they're holding Miss Artillery or what their plans are, you say. But we do know that she was alive not too long ago, which means that there's a good chance she's alive now. So we need to either find her or find some concrete evidence she faked her death quickly before a victim has a chance to kill our parents. So how do we do that? Um... Oh, well, that set of conclusions might sound mighty familiar, does it not? 
particle chimes, rolling her eyes. Once again, I'm ahead of the curve, and you floaties probably couldn't even see it up close. But I did manage to get a gander at the prison transfer location before the pile of vile burst. <clears throat> Where was it, you ask, when prodigal doesn't continue? I'll tell you when, when you need to know. In particular, once Trudy leaves, she sh shouldn't know where we're heading, just in case she decides to sneak some old cold revenge, or even more likely get herself kidnapped by our enemies. Plus, what's to stop you from ditching me from the moment I tell you, Lip? No, we need to do this together. <clears throat> and why is that, you ask? I have my reasons. Hold on, now you water. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> See that little link? People always tell me that they would excuse me, but there's no excuse for me, so. <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Uh, I'm always just, like, solid. Kiddos. <laughs> I'm like... You know, it's a totally human thing to do, so why not just rate it and judge people <laughs> by how good it is? Yeah. Because yeah. that's totally human yeah. also. Everyone should just wear a meter that lets them know how good it was and digitally uploads the results to the internet. Because the internet needs to know that as well as everything else. Yeah, just all of it. Yeah. All it, the internet. And it has to show up on Twitter, actually. Yes, on Twitter. <laughs> Straight to Twitter. Tweets have 280 characters now. Yeah, they do. Anything in the game. <laughs> really long burps. That fits in 280 characters. Yeah. I mean, sure. Why not? But it. On Twitter, as just like. A spell that the burp or the fart made. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like you're pushing. Or, yeah. um, no, you, uh, but voice it, to text. That's what I meant to say. Oh voice to God. text. Or, Mine is, like, it's really, just really bad. It's just Yes. So what we're basically saying is we've come up with something diabolical and should never come to see the light of day. I don't think that. I think it's a great idea, and I think some one of us should make that. Wait, what? <laughs> Did I'm you like zone for all that? No, I could hear, <laughs> but for some reason it just didn't register in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? What was just discussed? What? I mean, it's kind of hard to explain now oh when I'm God. trying to think of it. Yeah, how to... I have no clue where to start now. I don't know how to catch you up. Um, like We want to catch you up to the speed, but we're not even sure what the speed is. Yeah, we, we just know we it's a speed. Okay, what just happened? We probably got possessed by some sort of demon, let's be honest. Yeah. My girlfriend just sent me like seven Snapchat videos. Oh my god. She's not happy about something, but oh well. Alright. Back to this. Prodigal makes a valid point about Junie, but why do you think she seems to need you so badly? Prodigal definitely could have gone about finding her mother without you, but she's gone out of her way to loop you in. You don't have time to waste pressuring Prodigal on the issue and enduring whatever half-baked monologue she's created. Oh, <laughs> so God. you're going to operate on instinct now. However, as best as you can tell, you think Prodigal needs you because she obviously feels that we're connected and it's part of our destinies to work together. The reason doesn't matter. If Prodigal thinks she needs me, she won't hurt me. I get the sense that Prodigal is still hiding another reason. Who cares? The man Prodigal tells you where from most artillery is. I think we're connected. <laughs> Feel a connection. I feel like we're connected. And it's destiny. 
because it's a pig. A <laughs> destiny <laughs> child. <laughs> Trying to apply rational thoughts to motiv- Prodigal's motivation would be a monumental waste of time. For now. She clearly for wants now. you here, which, for, which is a very good thing. Because Prodigal currently holds all the cards. She could ditch you or kill you at any time if she wants. So you have to play by some of her rules. Until you can gain the upper hand. Until then, the fact that Prodigal feels that she needs you is a very good temporary protection. And if you think about Prodigal's motivation, it truly doesn't matter. Because what's more important is that right now it's your best interest to team up with Prodigal. That's because all the evidence points to the douche president deal has been destroyed. So I have to find Miss Artillery herself. And Prodigal is the only one who knows how to fast enough. I really want to go after him myself or bust my parents out of the void. But doing that would be a suicide mission, especially without my powers. Looping any of my allies would be insanely dangerous for them. And the fact Prodigal is expendable might be a good thing. It's just best to keep my enemies closer. I'm either the first one or the second one. So what about you? Mm. I, yeah, I like the first one. Okay. You might be able to work it all out on your own with some time and your powers back, but in your parents' execution looming, your powerless status in an entire nation is haunting you as time time is a luxury you do not have. Unfortunately, Prodigal has gathered intelligence and is the, is the perfect power set to see you through this as quickly as possible. So you want to, so you know you have to work with Prodigal now. Which leaves you to asking yourself one of the question. How are you possibly going to why is my phone going? Oh, whisper. How are you possibly going to reconcile teaming up with your once greatest enemy? You know that very soon you're probably going to find yourself in a situation under immense pressure without any time to think. So deciding what you want to do now will most definitely affect you later. Before I decide, I want to confront her about tipping out the police, accept her as my ally, work with her, but make sure to sleep with one eye open, get, pump her for info, then d- leave her light like a prom date, Pump oh. for info, info, then turn her into the police. Pump for info, then murder her. Oh, Lord, no. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to start letting Prodigal in because I'm developing feelings for her. Ye- no. <laughs> we <laughs> gay. I love that you were like, yeah, wait. I say fully accept her as an ally. Um... Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's the only way you know how to operate. And with stakes this high, an enemy of victim has to be your friend. <laughs> this is all rather scintillating, Joey finally says, breaking the silence. But I'd like to get the slugger out of here. Now. Yes, quite right, Prodigal says, walking towards your telelock draw. You played your part rather nicely, Miss Chawa. I'm not done playing it yet, Juhi sighs. Before I go, I'd like to have a word with Lip. Alone. Juhi stares down an indignant Prodigal, letting her know she means business. Fine, I'll see <clears throat> Terry in the bathroom then. Prodigal huffs, stopping towards the only door in the room. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, at least she has a bathroom. She disappears inside with Terry, and once she does, Junie turns to you. You know this is her lair, right? She probably can still... I know, it doesn't matter, Juhi sighs. This will just go faster without her constant rambling. <laughs> oh, dang. <clears throat> Since Sonia was murdered, I devoted my entire life to a cause that was very important to her, reporting the truth about the Meek movement. I spent months trying to expose the truth without them, without much luck. They've got their secrets locked up tight, Jewie says, taking as, uh, talking as fast as her sister used to, her words nearly jumbling together. But what's, on, what's going on right here? The mission you and Prodigal are tackling? It could be the bullet that... Inc- the, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. 
that kills the entire organization, not to mention that President Victon's fraud might be the biggest story of the century. So I'm going to keep uh, help you get where you need to go, because the moment you find Miss Artillery, I'm going to be the reporter to break the story. Seems like a nice good old ready to go lass. <laughs> All right. That's fine. <laughs> Good. Chewy finishes. L lastly, I need you to know that I'm not doing this for you or because I forgive you in any way. Are we clear? Crystal, you say because you really don't have the time to get into it with her right now. <laughs> Besides, you need all the help you can get no matter what the reason. <clears throat> Stupendous, Chewy sighs. Now here, give me your wrist. Thank you. We need to up Yeah, right? We need to upgrade the anti-tracking functions on your me chip, Chewy says as she fiddles with the me chip on your wrist. You have a decent security package, but it won't be enough. I need to take your me chip into shadow territory. Can you do that? Oh, of course I can, Chewy interrupts. I'm the I'm one of the world's finest undercover the only person who has ever been able to find me when I wanted to stay hidden is standing in that bathroom with a pet dinosaur. Uh, Judy takes a rare pause to sigh, then continues with her rapid firing words. Anyways, this should keep your meat chip's signature untraceable. I've also established a secure encrypted line to my meat chip so you, you and I can communicate, but you should not use your meat chip for any other communications or transaction transa transactional function. Not even spending any money? You ask wondering how you'll manage that? Especially not, since it's one of the easiest tracking methods, Joey explains. But I have an idea of how to pull... Put your bank account to good use. Uh, I think that's you. I think that's me, yeah. So what do you think? Chewie has just walked you through a report on your updated image and the last latest national sentiment since President Victon's announcement in the police raid. Fortunately, the combination has actually managed to lower anti-powered sentiment to 20. It looks like the president's victim, vic blah, 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 president no, 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 no. victims, <laughs> string tactics did not fully resonate with the nation. However, your own image suffered a blow, most likely because you were seen working with Prodigal. Your legend dropped to 50. That isn't ideal, but right now your legend level is actually at the bottom of your list of concerns. You know that you'll find a way to build it back up just as you have time and time again over the course of your career, especially when you're able to tell the public uh, once you're able to tell the public the truth about Miss Artillery and the reason you're teaming up with Prodigal. Right now, doing so would only endanger success of your mission by disclosing your motives to your enemies. Apparently also he... our security uh -oh. turned to 62. Oh. I don't like well, this. That's good. I don't like this. Well, Freedom. I mean, given we're kind of like on the run, that's not... Bad? Uh, <laughs> Juhi also generated a media, media trend report on the damage you've done to the victim at administration in the meat movement since the Hero Project finale. She summed up, she summed it up by calculating something she named regime damage points. The number of points reflects the amount image damage you've done to the victim and meet regime. Obviously, the more points you rack up, the more damage you inflict. Since you helped Ginny finish her investigation flawlessly, she was able to expose the Hero Project conspiracy and majorly tarnish the victim meek regime. Uh, combining that with the point loss for running from your fight with the police, you've tallied a regime damage point total of two. <clears throat> Jui promised that you're sure to have many more opportunities to score regime damage points over the course of your upcoming mission. Excuse me, especially since she'll be helping you rack them up by delivering any public announce announcements you want to send directly into public. Now that you've become an infinity powered icon, you have a platform and a following that will be looking to you for leadership. <laughs> 
okay. Um, so far, the public has seen that you're, you've been subjected to huge plots, but now you're going to show them that you're standing up for what you know is right and redefining your own rules. And Juhi will be putting her own life and reputation on the line to make sure your voice is truly heard. Her first suggestion to help you do so is transfer money from your soon to be frozen bank account to purchase some prominent ad space. Obviously, the more people your message reaches, the more regime damage points you'll score. Sometimes money truly is power. So, how much money do you want to transfer to Juhi on to spend on the ad? I, already I have only the have. We have the upgrade. Oh, we have the upgrade? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'll purchase the ad space as soon as I leave this infernal hole, Juhi says. But you're distracted as Meechip Hallelujah pops up to approve the transfer. 